Jefferson and Madison both warned us that if we ever gave the federal government sole and exclusive rights to determine the extent of its own power, that power would always grow, whether we had elections or we were able to vote bums out or courts or any of it. And they were right. For over a century, we the people have been protesting and suing and voting bums out, but year in and year out, it doesn't matter what political party is in Washington, D.C., it doesn't matter what individual occupies the office as president. Federal power always grows and your liberty is always less. And it's time that we turn that around. Jefferson's advice, and this is what probably some much better, more eloquent speakers will be able to talk to you about today, the, the experts, I'm just the promoter. Well, they said in the, uh, the Kentucky and Virginia resolutions of 1798, in essence, and I can paraphrase, Thomas Jefferson said, the several states composing the United States of America are not united on a principle of unlimited submission to their general government. And when the general government assumes undelegated powers, quote, a nullification of the act is the rightful remedy. You notice he didn't say a nullification of the act is a pretty decent rightful remedy. It's not a rightful remedy. You know, vote the bums out or go to court or something like that, but if you want to try something else, try nullification. No, he said it is the rightful remedy whensoever the general government assumes undelegated powers. It is our duty to say no to the federal government on a state level, on a community level, on a local level, every single time they try to violate our rights. So a lot of people will ask, well, what is nullification? And I think the best way to describe it is how my good friend Derek Sheriff, who is the uh, state chapter coordinator of our Arizona 10th Amendment Center, kind of a hotbed out there. And what he says, if you guys don't mind me reading off, he says this, nullification is not secession or insurrection, but neither is it unconditional or unlimited submission to the federal government. Nullification is not something that requires any decision any statement or any action from any branch of the federal government. Nullification is not the result of obtaining a favorable court ruling either. Nullification is not asking the federal government to start doing or stop doing anything. It doesn't depend on any federal law being repealed. It does not require permission from any person or any institution outside of one's own state. Nullification is this. We don't need no stinking permission. Being from California, a few weeks ago I went to an event called HempCon. Pretty crazy, they smoke weed in California. Well, it's not legal in Florida. You can't do something unless you get permission from the federal government or your local one. Um, HempCon was really about uh, marijuana. It wasn't necessarily about hemp, which is an industrial farming product that competes with the oil companies and the paper companies and the cotton companies and all that. But it was pretty amazing to see. This was at down in downtown Los Angeles at the LA Convention Center. There were hundreds and hundreds of people there Dozens of vendors, all kinds of businesses surrounding the, uh, the, the hemp or the marijuana industry. You could find, <laughs> you could find construction companies that would help you build a grow room in, the, in your house so you could grow, grow marijuana. There were solar power companies so you could get energy to grow your marijuana. There were dispensaries that delivered 24 hours a day 
You can get weed in Los Angeles 24 hours a day faster than Domino's Pizza. <laughs> What's the point of this? The point is, every single one of those vendors at the Los Angeles Convention Center, very publicized, were violating federal law, either directly or by helping someone else violate the law. Because the federal government, not the Constitution, says that marijuana is illegal in every situation. Well, there weren't any DEA officials knocking down the door to say, oh, you guys better get out of here. No one was arrested, no one was bothered. Whether you like it or not, people were conducting business almost like a free market, can you believe it, in LA? In peace, without anyone bothering them from the government. In fact, in 2005, the Supreme Court ruled that all state medical marijuana laws were illegal or illegal. Just like it's illegal for you to not buy a health plan. At the time that that Supreme Court diktat came down, there were 10 states that had medical marijuana laws on the books. Well, you'd think, okay, the Supreme Court has ruled that you can't do this, they're all gonna be repealed. You know how many were repealed after the Supreme Court said it? Yeah, we got a few, no, zero. Thank you. So what does this tell us? It's a little bl blueprint. I'm not necessarily talking about weed, well, I mean, in a way, it's a lesson. Even though all the laws on the books say you cannot sell marijuana, there was a guy, Tommy Chong, from the Cheech and Chong uh, movies years ago. He was arrested seven years ago merely for selling pieces of glass that could be used in conjunction with marijuana. Today, all kinds of people are selling all kinds of other products, so it's come a long way. The reality is, is even though they have the laws on the books in Washington, D.C., even though the Supreme Court has said you can't have laws on a state level, people are still doing what they want to. Why? Because we don't need no stinking permission. So this is really the blueprint, whether it's gun rights, or health freedom, or maybe someone should start saying, we don't want federal education dollars because we're sick of you controlling our schools. This is the blueprint. It's, I know there's some good candidates in here today, but the solution to federal problems does not lie with the federal government. It lies with our states and us and you. So for years and years and years, people have been defying the federal government on marijuana. They are now defying them. 25 states have said no to the Real ID Act, and they're getting away with it as well. My girlfriend's family comes from Missouri, and they were told that if you don't get a new national ID card, you're not going to be able to open up a new bank account, you're not going to be able to go to a federal building, you're not going to be able to get on a plane, but guess what? They don't have new federal ID cards. They get on planes, no one bothers them, and they exercise their rights in peace, well, to a point, minus the TSA, and uh, they do the way, the way that things are supposed to be, without permission from the federal government. So the question that I have for you, and this is the important thing, when it happens, and it will, whether today or sometime in the near future, when the federal government tells you you have to purchase some health care plan, and you say, well, you know, I'm afraid of the penalties, I'm afraid of getting arrested. Ask yourself a question. Do you have as much courage as the pot smokers?
Because we the people need to exercise our rights whether they give us permission to or not. We don't need no stinking permission from no federal government.